And to start off with, I want to talk about my prospect of the year, and I got to give that to Edgar Berlanga, man. My man, Edgar Berlanga from Brooklyn, New York, baby. Stand up. Um, got to give it to my man, dude. This guy's getting first-round knockouts every time he gets in the ring. How am I not going to give it to him? Um, of course, you know, he's going to have to step up in competition over time, and he's going to have to prove that against some more capable fighters. Um... But right now, just on the eye test, just on, you know, on just using my eyes, I think the kid looks like the goods, right? He's putting everybody out in the first round. There's extremely skilled guys that don't put bums out in the first round, you know. But this guy, you know, and he's taking these incremental steps up in competition, and it doesn't really seem to matter. Um, so I look forward to seeing. And there was a look. There was other guys that I thought maybe could be the prospect of the year. I thought maybe Elvis Rodriguez would be a good pick. You know, I really like Robesi Ramirez. I love how well-rounded his skills are. And as good as both of those guys have been, none of them have 16 fights that are all first-round knockouts. Like, th there's that's a very exciting, even concept. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, nobody can last more than three minutes with this man. That's like a, That's a very marketable feature right there. To be able to say that. Like, nope. You don't even get out of the first round when you get in the ring with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I think it's going to take some levels up before he can find that. I think he's that good. Because you can see that he's got skills. You know, you can't put guys out like that if you don't know how to set it up. You can't. You know, he clearly knows how to set his punches up and put a little space between him and his man to create power. He obviously has a good understanding of that. He's not smothering himself, you know. So I think this is a very dangerous cat. And, you know, I'd like to see him in with somebody with some more experience who's had some success, you know, at a different level, at a higher level. You know, Gabe Rosado is one of the first that comes to mind. David Lemieux, I think, would be a great opponent for him. Anthony Durrell would be a great opponent for him. You know, somebody in that that's like a true contender, um, but just – Guys in the top 10, top 20 that are just below the elite of the division. You know, I want to see what he looks like at that level. Because there are times where you step up like that and it's a different thing. It's just a different thing when you're fighting, you know, professional fighters. And then all of a sudden you're fighting world-class professional fighters. You're fighting the guys that are amongst the best 20 guys in your weight neighborhood on the planet. You know, it's a different thing. It's just a different thing. You know, the first thing that came to my mind was, and it's not the same thing at all, but you think about, like, Broner and Ponce de Leon. You know, Broner looked crazy against everybody before that fight, and then he fought Ponce de Leon. It's like, oh, this is a different thing. Like, does, do your skills hold up um, against this skill level, against this class of fighter? I think Edgar Berlanga is way better than Adrian Broner will ever, will ever be, but... I do think that we got to see it for ourselves against a real good fighter. And I hope we get to see that in 21. Um, you know, my my trainer of the year, I felt like this one was actually probably the easiest. It's got to be Derek James. You know, and I'm seeing a lot of other people agreeing with me. You know, having potentially the two best wins of the year. You know, Jamel Charlo stopping Jason Rosario with a jab to the body. And then having Errol Spence fucking beat Danny Garcia after coming back from that car accident. You know, for me, Derek James has got to be the trainer of the year. And anytime you see this dude interviewed, man, like that's the kind of guy you want in your camp. You know what I'm saying? You want like a, you want a calm but critical thinking person, you know? And that's exactly how he strikes me. He strikes me as very level and somebody who you can come back to the corner and have like a good exchange with that's gonna you know keep you confident but motivate you at the same time you know and I think both of those wins are definitely the best wins of 2020 outside of Lopez and Lomachenko um and certainly the getting Errol Spence ready to fight you know a top 10 welterweight after that car accident I think is pretty fucking impressive and I think it absolutely makes him the trainer of the year for me um you know, and then I started thinking about the knockout of the year, and there were some really good candidates for that, right? There was 
Javante Davis against Leo Santa Cruz. That was one of those one shot. You got fucking Dillian White getting knocked the fuck out by Alexander Povetkin. You know, that was a real fucking lights out shot. You had Jamel Charlo putting Rosario out with a jab to the body that left him kind of like hiccuping on the floor. You know, and that was a brutal way to go out. But for me, my knockout of the year and my fight of the year has to be Jose Zapata and Ivan Baranchik. You know, these two guys put their fucking heart and soul on the line in this fight. I don't know if you've seen it, but they knock it's five rounds and they knock each other down four times each. And in the fifth round, Zapata lands, I believe, a right hand. I got to go back and watch it, actually, because Zapata is a southpaw. It might have been a left hand. But if you watch this fight, man, literally just before it, Baranchik puts Zapata down for the fourth time in the fight. Zapata gets up. He's, you know, it was a more of like a ropes held you up knockdown. He's he's up. He's doing the count. You know, and Baranchik, of course, is like, I'm going to fucking stop this guy finally. And Zapata just puts him out like that. And the truth is, it's it, the knockout was so rough that it was disturbing. Um, when it happened, even Tim Bradley, who was doing commentary, was, I think, really, um, just really struck by it. And if you, even if you've just like, I, I think if you've been hit, or if you've been in the ring, you've kind of felt that fear at all, like. For especially somebody like Tim Bradley who fought at the highest level, it must be really jarring to see something like that because it could have been him against Ruslan or it could have been Ruslan. You know, when two guys are swinging like that, landing hard shots like that, there's always the potential that something bad can happen. You know, and that's part of the sport. But I think it's part of the beauty of the sport in a sense because... These these uh, these guys are so resilient, and they're putting so much on the line every time they get in the ring, and they know what they're putting on the line every time they get in the ring. And that's the thing, too. They know what they're getting into more than we will ever fucking know. They know what they're getting into, you know? And this is one of them fights where you realize maybe you don't leave with everything you had going in. And I hope, you know, f for both of them, you know, for Zapata, Zapata was taking huge shots in this fight, and he could... You know, if something ha if something happened to him after the fight, I wouldn't have been surprised either. You know, sometimes it isn't the one punch that puts you, you know, into a, a brain bleed. It's 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 a sustained punishment over time, and they both took a sustained punishment over time in this fight. It was five rounds, you know, of them just swapping knockout punches, punches that would knock out essentially anybody else that wasn't at the elite level, you know. That's what they were landing on each other. And so for me, it's my knockout of the year and my fight of the year. Because it's very rare that that quickly do you see eight knockdowns between between the two fighters. Um, and then ending it with a knockout that's that sudden. All those other ones I talked about, yeah, the knockouts were sudden. But the fights were not the same level of fights leading up to the moment. You know, Tank and, and Leo was a great fight, but they didn't put each other down four times. These guys put each other down four fucking times each, and then boom, it was over in an instant. And I just, I want to leave it at, you know, when you see knockouts like this, it can be jarring. And you should really internalize that feeling and, and, and understand that you should respect these guys. Anybody that puts on a pair of gloves and gets in the ring should have respect for them because this is what they're risking. Um, you know, as far as my fighter of the year... Again, another one I put a lot of time thinking at, a lot of time into thinking about. Fucking, I'm like retarded today. Um, spent a lot of time thinking about, and I gotta go with Errol Spence. I gotta go with Errol Spence Jr., man. You know, I think you could easily say Tyson Fury for stopping Deontay Wilder. I think you could easily say Tank for stop for knocking out Leo Santa Cruz with one shot. I think you could definitely make an argument for Tiafimo Lopez, you know, winning a decision over Vasily Lomachenko. But for me, the magnitude of, you know, the comeback that Errol went through and and the severity of that car accident and just the fact that he's alive, let alone able to prepare himself for a high level boxing match, 
I really think it's amazing. It's it's a lot like the Danny Jacobs story, you know, where it's very rare that people survive these kinds of, or not rare, but it's sometimes people don't survive these kinds of things. So when somebody survives and then is able to perform at that level again, it's just like, it really is amazing. And I feel like on a personal level, I've had a lot of injuries, right? I've had issues with my hands. I've had issues with my ankles. I've had shoulder surgery. I've had knee surgery, right? So all of these things, it's never easy to come back from these things. It, it gets harder because every time it's just like, it's one more thing that's damaged on you. So every time you got to come back, you're dealing with stuff that's fixed already. You know what I'm saying? So for him, in that kind of accident, you know, to not really have that many crazy injuries that aren't like cosmetic injuries, you know, teeth and facial injuries and whatever, like, it's just amazing, man. It's just amazing. I'm glad he's healthy. I'm glad he can still fight. And clearly, he's still maybe the best fucking welterweight in the world. 